Hello again. It's the garage again. I know some of you will be very excited and some of you are like, Kate, when are you next going to do a tech video? I don't know. Um, we'll see what's in the scientific papers over the next few weeks, I guess. See what uh, comes up. But today I am playing in the garage. And I want to say thank you, first of all, um, first for being so nice while I was having my little um, contretemps after the last video. Um, those of you who know me uh, personally, like not me in front of the camera, me not in front of the camera, will know that I'm not, not the best with failure. Um, I'm getting better. I'm working on it. I have a very nice therapist. Um, but yeah, when things go wrong, I don't always take it very well. And actually, I took it hard. Not as hard as I could have, uh, because I didn't think it was actually my fault, but I didn't know what to do about it. And it kind of, it threw me for a loop. So thank you very much for all your kind comments. Um, and also very specifically thank you to one of our members. You know who you are. Um, you reached out with some suggestions, uh, an offer to come help, um, which was very gratefully received, but actually meant that I had to come out and check that it wasn't something stupid before I got you to travel here. And it's very kind of you to offer. I am so grateful, but also I'm so grateful because you got me out here. So obviously this has happened after that. So I'm going to talk you through what um, what I did to work out what was wrong and what was wrong. Um, and then we'll get to where we are today, which is forwards a little tiny, tiny bit. Alrighty, so the first thing I did when I went out to actually go check on the equipment was some fault finding. Um, I checked a couple of voltages. There was a suggestion that I should just try turning it on without the current limiter in place, but I was just not very happy with that because I knew it had previously worked with the current limiter in place and it hadn't drawn a ton of current. So I thought there must be some problem somewhere. Um, so the first thing I did was like just some basic I checked that there was 12 volts on the back of the amp seal connector going to the right pins. Um, I did another round of checking the voltages at various places um, where I knew there were test points, still wasn't working. Um, and then I decided to stare at it and I was like, I wonder if 12 volts is actually reaching the board at all. And I couldn't find a 12 volt test point. So there was a little bit of just like random poking around. And then I decided that that wasn't really working. So instead, I was just going to try connecting 12 volts directly to the IDC connector, um, having disconnected everything else from the board. So the rest of the inverter and low flashing lights. So the board itself was fine. Um, as you can see, not drawing a ton of current, um, which is what I expected. OK, then I thought, what's going on with this? Because I know there's 12 volts on the back of the amp seal connector. And I had this vague recollection of reading somewhere or hearing somewhere that there was a problem with one of the batches of boards where the notch mark was the wrong way round. And so I checked the voltages and yeah. The problem was that that board has the notch mark the wrong way around, the connector is on it the wrong way around. Thankfully, I put the current limiter on there, so uh, the board did not get fried because I'd already burnt out the tracks the previous time, which was probably due to this same problem. Um, so I know that I do need a new board, um, but in the meantime, I was like, well, maybe I can just knock up a new connector um, that corrects for the pins. So I was like, I, I know that there is some more 34 way uh, ribbon cable somewhere in this garage. I will save you the hour I spent hunting um, for it. Did not find it. Uh, as you can see, I decided to see if I could just salvage the one that I had um, and work out which way the pins should go to um, to correct for the fact that one of the connectors on the board is backwards. Um, and 
Well, let's cut a long story short with a lot of me, you know, finding pins that had escaped as I'd taken it apart. And this was very much to be a temporary solution. This was just to test it and see if it was working um, and to avoid me ADHDing and wandering off uh, from the project. Um, and long story short, that, uh, that didn't work. Um, I couldn't work out a good way to switch those cables over. So... Then I took a break and made myself some lunch because I was like, this is uh, not going brilliantly. Um, and let's be fair, I'd actually had a pretty lousy day with not much sleep. Um, so I, I was being nice to myself. Okay. Back after lunch, and I decided that, again, rather than trying to use the amp seal connector, that I would just use the IDC connector. If I can get it working and tested with the IDC connector, then I can tell whether that main board is happy or unhappy, having been uh, assaulted twice with voltages coming in on the wrong pins. Um, and then I can maybe replace that amp seal connector board. So then I spent a little bit of time going through the IDC connector pins and comparing them to the amp seal connector pins and which ones had which motor wiring which bit of the resolver was connected where um, and obviously also making sure that I had the voltage connections correct. Um, did all of that which took a little bit of time uh, not least because I'm now completely paranoid that I'm going to screw it up um, even though I think both of these instances actually haven't been me. Um, so First of all, I just did a quick test of the board with it connected to the inverter all set up. Um, and as you can see, we had a, a current limit event straight away, uh, which is not what I had in mind. Um, and so I had to think about this and I realized that obviously it's now trying to power the inverter through that little tiny 12 volt wire um, and that is not right. So um, I did do a double check and make sure I hadn't upset anything. So I uh, took all the connectors back off again. Uh, there's been a lot of back and forth on this. Um, pulled all the connectors back off again before I went on to test whether it would work with the connectors all connected. So this was a bench test. Yes, yeah, still working. Okay, let's turn it off. And then what we do next is we put all the connectors back on uh, with the inverter actually connected. So that's the 12 volt wire there going to the outside of the inverter case. Um, you also have that going through that current limit just because I am very, very paranoid at this point. Um, a lot of checking of voltages and making sure that all the connectors are seated properly. And then we turn it on and now now we have a reasonable amount of current being drawn and we have blinky lights. So that means that the inverter is powering up. Uh, what is really interesting actually is that you can see the power demand on the little flashing light there. So this is the reversing light off my car um, and you can just see it flickering away there as the power demands from something in there just just change. So I, I just found that quite entertaining. So I could steal the bench supply to power the high voltage side of the circuit. I tried a old UPS battery that I had lying around. Um, that sagged to like nine volts when the current hit and then the board didn't start running so that wasn't going to work. Uh, second one that I had lying around was sat at 9 volts so then I went and fished out the 12 volt battery that I had actually planned to use for this. This is the old battery out of my Kia Nero. Um, please don't repeat this at home. Uh, this is some terrible things that I'm doing here. Um, so uh, this is a 12 volt supply. The connectors that I have on that battery are in fact um, ones where you can turn on and off the connection from the car. They're really quite, actually quite nice. Um, and so here we go. So here's me just checking that we're getting 12 volts. That is enough to power the inverter and the open inverter board um, and the low voltage side. So then I went through and I actually hooked up all the motor wiring 
um, and not just the power wiring. Um, so this is the res motor resolver and the connections for that. Um, there's also a power supply which runs to the motor resolver. I can't remember if it's 12 or 5 volts um, off the top of my head, but yeah, hooked that up. And yes, I know I should really have a proper connector for this, but I don't. Okay, so then I went and connected the high voltage connector to uh, the two high voltage uh, supply pins. So these would go to the battery in your EV. Um, and in my case, they are going to go to my bench supply, plus or minus as many batteries as I can put in series with them. You can also see uh, I've got the light bulb base, which acts as a pre-charge resistor for the capacitors in the inverter. I'm not going to explain that. If you want that explained, then you can go and watch Damien McGuire's video on setting this up. It's uh, the uh, FOC tuning video for the Prius Gen 3 open inverter. Uh, I will pop a link in the down below. Um, so that is, uh, I think that's a 200 watt light bulb, um, 120 volt, 200 watt filament light bulb, because you want a filament light bulb. Um, and lo, we have what should be the capacitors charging through the pre-charge resistor. Now what should happen is that light bulb should dim and go out, but it doesn't. So I spent a lot of time looking at Damien McGuire's video, um, well, sometime going through Damien Maguire's video to make sure I understood what I was doing properly. And then I was like, well, it's time to steal another 12 volt battery um, because I don't have uh, enough volts, I suspect, because the bench supply is providing 30 volts. Um, and then I'd actually, by this point, also connected um, the 12 volt battery that's powering the inverter in series with the 30 volts from the power supply. So that gave me uh, 42 volts. Um, 42 volts is still not enough. Um, so then I connected this second battery in or in series, uh, which took me up to 54 volts. That is still nowhere near the 150 that uh, Damien Maguire uh, mentions as being a good starting point for testing. Um, so yeah, I stopped today um, because, well, I'll hand over to me in the future. All right, so progress. Uh, the board is still working. The inverter is working with the board connected. That I think is the case. Um, however, Kate, keep your hands away from it. Um, so like, it's like my dad used to say with the back of a TV, you only ever put one hand in it. Um, and I'm not going to put one hand in it at all. Um, so the problem I think is that this, uh, nice power little power supply only goes up to 30 volts at, I think one amp. It seems to current limit at one amp. Um, which is probably not enough. I mean, I, I, I am certain that that by itself is not enough, but that plus the two 12 volt batteries that I have on the floor down here, um, they, that gets you up to 30, 42, 54 volts, which I don't think is enough, particularly when it's currently limited to an amp, um, to charge the capacitors in the inverter. I mean, I'm sure they've got some current in them, so I'm not going to touch it, but uh, that is, um, I think, the problem that I'm running into. So then the question is, should I buy a better power supply, or at least a more powerful power supply? This is a fine power supply for doing low voltage stuff, or low-ish voltage stuff. Do I need um, a two, three hundred, probably... Yeah, I mean, uh, Damien Maguire says about 150 volts, so 150 volt power supply, 200 volt power supply, do I need one of those um, to do, like... So that's one option, is that I get a better power supply. The other option is I do what I originally said um, and rig up more batteries, but that's going to mean quite a few batteries to get up to 150-ish volts. So I was discussing this with Nikki after I was in from the garage um, and starting work on editing. And she decided that since she also needs a high voltage power supply, what she would do is get one sent directly to me. Uh, so now we have a 200 volt nice power power supply to go with my 30 volt one. 
So this should provide the 150-ish volts that Damien suggests in his video as being a good starting point for testing those high voltage components in the inverter, which is exciting. It should mean that I can um, head out and do that. However, today I am editing a video and I've only had an hour and a half sleep. So I decided playing with high voltage today, not a good idea. Um, however, I'm gonna leave this all set up Hopefully it won't be too long. Um, I know, I know there are electrical engineers out there who are crying. Um, I certainly know there's one who's horrified. Um, but the other thing I need to do um, is also work out what I'm going to do about this connector here, which... So this connector is the right way round. I think the one on the board, the... Amp seal board is backwards. I'm loath to replace that until I know that this board and this inverter are working. But that is also on the list is like, I need that. Um, I'll need a new 34 way IDC connector. I spent a solid hour wandering around the garage because I know I have some extra cable somewhere but I have ADHD, so there we go. Um, so that's it. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. I know these have been pretty geeky um, and they're not to everyone's taste. I will be back doing stuff with science and um, whatever um, in the near future. Um, but it just depends on what we see that you all ask me to talk about. So... Thanks. Keep evolving. Thanks for watching today. You can connect with us on Patreon, Discord, Mastodon, Blue Sky, or through our website. Massive thanks to the amazing folks scrolling by right now. You are the reason we can stay independent and keep making content without corporate influence. Want to see your name here too, or possibly have it mispronounced by me? Support starts at just $1.50 a month, and you can even gift memberships. And of course, a massive welcome to our newest members, Adam B, Andrew Brown, Tiara Graves, Philip Jackson, Dieter Molthorpe, Nur Naif, Anonymous, Todd Plenes, Beruz Shariati, Andreas Stasiak, Ralph Stoltz, Richard Teague, Triple A He They, Lisa Vaji, Vicky Morales, Magpie Motors, and Travis Whitman. Thank you for joining up to support the channel. At this particular time in history when everyone's feeling the pinch, we are so grateful you've joined the team and that helps us keep making great content. If you'd like to join them, you'll find our Patreon link below or you can sign up via YouTube. If you're signing up for Patreon though, please use the Patreon website. Do not use the Apple or Google app since both take a big cut that hurts your wallet and reduces the income we receive. Prefer a one-off contribution? We've got Kofi, Bitcoin, a PO box, our swag store, and even an Amazon affiliate link. All great ways to make sure your money helps us. We post new videos every few days in the main channel, plus extras over on TE Take Two. And since YouTube comments, while open, aren't safe for us, the best way to chat is through Patreon, Mastodon, Blue Sky, or on our website. Or, in fact, our very own Discord chat. If you want more, the algorithm thinks you'll like this video, but we'd love you to check out this one instead. Be awesome, be kind, be intentional, and never forget to resist. Keep evolving!